Hello and welcome to this week's Hashtag Tour to Tour. This week I'm joined by Spencer Fearing oh, and British lightweight champion Lewis Ritson. Lewis, thanks for joining us. Emotional night on Saturday night, winning the belt outright. How was it? Oh, great. It was, uh, uh, you know, my first jump pro, that's the belt up I wanted and now it's a, that's the belt up I've got. And did you see the fight, Spencer? You weren't sat ringside as usual. No, I wasn't sat at ringside because Newcastle is too far for me to travel. <laughs> but the people are really nice. I swear down, they're really nice people. Don't get twisted now. I don't want your dad coming for me. But I am, seriously, for a young man to, to show that, that depth and aptitude, the way how you, you like showed, like it was like a disrespect, and even though you're showing respect, but it was like a disrespect, like nobody's done that to, to Highland. Highland's unbeaten in 18 fights, and you just walk through him like you're not in my league, and that's what you're meant to do. And you you, you did, you, you brushed him, and that's no, that's no disrespect to Highland, because I believe that can come again, but this game's all about levels, and you are on, a, on, a, on another level, but you know how the game goes, new levels, new devils, so that means that you've got to train like a devil, you've yeah. got to still be on it, all right? You've still got to be on it, but no. very, yeah. very good class act, class. Loads of tweets to get through, so we'll get started. Dan Frost, firstly, congratulations, congratulations, Lewis, on your quick and ridiculous, impressive Lonsdale achievement. You obviously have a very fun fan-friendly style. Was there any fight in particular you watched coming up that inspired you to become the type of fighter you are today? Uh, one in particular, I used to watch uh, the Australian Michael Katsidis. You know, he, I, 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 I fight on the inside. He was a good inside fighter. I used to watch quite, what, uh, quite a lot of him when I was younger and sort of like based myself on him. Yeah. Seriously? Seriously Katsidis. Yeah, Katsidis, yeah. Yeah, because I, I, <clears throat> I don't really see the... the, the the similarities because he was more stocky, stockier yeah, you, fighter yeah. than you are, and you're you're longer armed. Yeah, and you're more loose limbed. Um, I, that is a surprise to me no, that yeah. you, you actually watch Cat Cedars. But all I'm saying to you is like, you can watch him all you want, but please just move your head because he didn't really move his head that much because you just pride yourself on toughness. And you've got pretty looks now. You don't want to, you know, what I mean? <laughs> you don't, don't want to spoil them features now. No. Right? <laughs> Well, Daniel McClay was going to ask, uh, how did it feel walking out to the atmosphere on Saturday night and did it have any impact on your game plan when the first bell rang? The atmosphere was incredible. No, it was something else. We, I mean, we, we thought I had sold 1,200 tickets, but we, I didn't expect it to be that mad as what it was. Yeah, oh, it was, it was crazy, <laughs> man. So, but uh, no, it didn't, it didn't uh, all have the game plan, nothing like that. When we, I watched Highland versus Omen and we seen that he wasn't too good on the inside. So the plan was to get, get in there early and let the body shots go and that worked. Yeah, and your dad at the end as well just looked so emotional. No, yeah, I think what well, I see, I had said I had win that belt for him and if I won it, I'd be on his mantelpiece, so I think it was a bit emotional for him. But it was, and you brought it with us today? We were with the yeah, they will bring it to you over his uh, lovely belt. Well, Babs has tweeted in, last year you spoke about almost walking away from the sport due to a lack of opportunities. What advice would you give so fighters in similar situations who have the talent yet struggle to get the attention of the promoters and broadcasters? If you could give any advice. Just never give up, just stay in the gym. Just stay in the gym and just train, because that phone call will always go. It happened with us with the Barrett. The phone call will just come, and uh, you've got to be ready for it, and we were. And what about the job you turned down as well? Oh, yeah, well, I had applied for a few factory works and uh, factory jobs, and I got off at a job at a bleach factory, packing bleach. But uh, they didn't actually get back to us. I didn't turn it down. They didn't get back to us. So <laughs> good job as well. I wouldn't be here. Yeah, would be in, that, uh, in the factory now, but a blessing in disguise. Oh, well, Matt has also tweeted in, what is the aim next? European title or are you aiming above that already? Spencer, where do you think he should go next? Where should I, you know what? Tommy Cole. Prime, that, that's the fight. Do you know what I mean? Here's Tommy oh. Cole is a champion who's come off champ. That is the fight that I would want to see because um, Tommy Cole has seen rejuvenated now. Now he's come back down in weight. Um, and uh, that match up, and not only that, but we'll match you, match you, not play around, we'll match him. Literally, match you, they match you properly. Like, like a fight like this, and I think especially like where you are positioned in your career and the things that Tommy wants to go and do because they're, they're muting about, all right, then you could be a future world champion. That's the talk right now, mm -hmm. right? So there's a lot of pressure. Tommy's still got aspirations to doing that. So Tommy should be mixing with these guys because then Tommy is a warrior. Don't get twisted with Tommy Cole. He's a warrior. Got a very, very good camp with Jamie, with Jamie Moore as well. So that is a fight that I would love to see, like, especially Jamie Moore's very well-versed and knowledgeable man on the, on the fight game, and so is your father. Okay. So to see those two great minds working against each other as well can only be a great 
great fight. And he was there on Saturday night as well, Tommy. Spying, he was spying. He was spying on you, on you yeah. as well. Well, if that's, that, if that's a fight Eddie wants to give with, then we, we'll take it. You know, I, I'll snap, snap his hand off at that. I'll be very confident in taking and uh, very confident in beating Tommy. But he's a good fighter and don't get us wrong. He's got a bit popping his, pop his punches as well, so be fireworks. Who else would you like to face? You know, I know you I, always say that leave it up to Eddie, but you know, if Eddie said to you, who who would you choose? You know, I'll but I'll go for the European title. Me, I think it's it's called Tati from Finland. I think he's got it somewhere like that. But allegedly, Tati's meant to be moving on to World Honours now, so oh, it could be a vacant title. It could title be a vacant now, title, yeah. So you know, I feel as though I've done domestic quite well now, and uh, proved I'm above domestic level in about European titles. There to take, and that's the one I would like to take. Well, this is an interesting. Speaking of domestic level, uh, Thomas Lyons has asked, would you target another domestic dust up with either of these three, Crawler, Campbell, Burns, or have you set your sights on European tail? So we're going back to Crawler, Campbell, and Burns. Do you know what I, mean? I, I, I would fight? I, I, personally, I, I, uh, when I first started my career, I was up Scotland and I used to have been in the same camp as Burns, and uh, I used to see him as a bit of a role model. And you know, I, personally, I wouldn't really like to fight Burns because I think as well, you know, he's had his time now. He might be a little bit on his way down. I wouldn't really want to be the because I'm confident I would beat any one of them. I wouldn't really want to be the one that knocks him, knocks him off and have to retire. You know, like yeah. not saying that in a nasty way. So, I mean, I, Campbell, Crawley, yeah, I would fight them in a heartbeat. You know, Burns, if that's what I had to do, I would. But I would like to stay away from that one. But that's a very honest, seriously. I, I rate that. You got rate. You got to be commended for that because yeah. me personally, I don't. If you are a rival to me. And then come out my division, and that's what I would say. But and I like that. Um, I don't think him fighting Ricky Burns, then you'll, it will be seen no disrespect to Ricky Burns, but it will seem like well, they're going to get a last payday before you call it quits. Um, Campbell's is still in World Honor League yeah. right now. Um, so so is Crawler. Um, but a great fight stylistically would be you yourself versus Crawler because yeah. Crawler is tough. Can hold shots as well and and can rally. So that, like, for your learning, yeah. the, I would say like you and Andy Crawler, right now that'd be a great yeah. fight. But I mean, truthfully, personally, I think Carmel's probably a little bit too high for me. Like at this moment in time, I think he's, you know, he's up there with the elite. You know, like he's just done yeah. a good points for Norris. I think, like, truthfully, deep down, I think he would probably be a little bit too step too far for me at the minute. But a couple of fights down the line, you know, if I do fight the European and win, and you know, get a few more good names, and I think that's a fight I would definitely take. This is refreshing to hear from a young man because usually, yeah, I'll fight him, yeah, I want to take on him, blah, but this is very reserved and, and it shows that you've got, you got thinkers around you. I don't know if that knowledge is just coming from you, but maybe your dad and the rest of the people around you, then that's, that's very refreshing to hear. Who wins, Crawler or Ritson? Who wins? Both of them are buddies. <laughs> that's now I'm being real. <laughs> Both of them. Right, now, you know what? T t you know what? On the performance that you put on, then I think that you could you could be the edge favourite. But whereas Crawler has proven himself at world class, especially his fight against Perez, where people thought he was going to get knocked out in that fight, and he just dealt with him. Yeah. And there's no shame in losing to Lenares because Lenares is a fantastic fight, and we saw Lenares knock down Lomachenko. So it's a it's a very very tough one. And our producer Donald was a is, right, but I'm saying that's a very very tough one. But I think we most probably have to favour youth because there's one man who's got a lot of miles on the clock, so maybe we'd have to favour youth. Interesting. Well, Norman Barton has asked, can't recall a Newcastle boxer creating so much excitement. Atmosphere on Saturday was unreal. I get the feeling you will fight anyone, but who would be dream opponent at St James's? Late May 2020 for a world title. Who from Newcastle United would walk in with you? For, hold on. For the fight-wise, if it was going to be for a world title, you wouldn't be like a domestic dust up, wouldn't you? You know, like we're seeing like the names that we've just mentioned there, yeah. like the Crawlers or the Campbells, you know, in a few years' time, like if Campbell's up there and I could be ready for him, then yeah, that would be a good fight, I think, for a world title. Uh, who would walk us out? Got to be Big Al, hasn't it? Big Al Shearer from Newcastle. So. That would be the football I was, I was I was just gonna say that. I said it had to be Alan Shearer. <laughs> you know, isn't 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 yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. It has to be him, man. Seriously. And huge dream as well to fight at St James's. Yeah, massive dream. But you know, we're, we're miles and miles off that yet. Like, you know, we're, we're just past domestic level. I think like if we could get a world title fight, I mean, Tony Bell who done it got us in Park, so there's no yeah. use seeing that we couldn't do it. But we're a long, long way off that yet. But you know, that is the dream, and hopefully we can get there. Yeah. Well, we'll wait and see. Well, Lewis, thanks so much for coming in. That's all for this week. Tune in next week for more hashtag Tour to Tour or check out iTunes for the podcast. Sky Sports.
Feel it all. 